prophets promised long ago a king would come to bring us hope and our virgin bears a sign the time to save the world has Shepherds run in haste to see the one the angels praised in cattle stall. They find a girl who holds the hope of all the world. Emmanuel has come to us. The Christ. Bible Church. My name is Christian. I'm the founder and lead minister of Missions Bible Ministry. And masaya kami na kayo po ay naririto ngayon to join us for our Sunday message. And bago po tayo magpatuloy, tayo muna ay mag-recollect sa kabutihan ng Panginoon all throughout the week. Again, I would like to thank God for sustaining us throughout the week with His providence for food, shelter, clothing, and good health. Um, we were able to have our baby, um, visit the clinic para sa kanyang check up sa pedia and maraming salamat sa Panginoon kasi wala naman siyang sakit or anything um, but our doctor or her pedia uh, gave her some uh, supplements I think some vitamins and some anti-allergy medication uh, but praise God kasi nothing serious um, we're also grateful sa sustenance ng Panginoon all throughout the week na We were able to survive na matapos ng misis ko yung kanyang workload, 
at ako naman yung school work and ministry work we were able to um, finish this message na napaka buti talaga ng Panginoon because aside from being able to work on this message this message um, God used also to work in me supernaturally um, I am very grateful dito sa mensaheng ito because Um, the simple message uh, was able to communicate sa akin kung ano yung puso ng Panginoon na somehow I am lacking throughout the week or for the past few weeks na I've been missing out on this simple um, truth na tinuturo sa atin ng Panginoon for today's message. I'm also grateful para sa aming mga churchmates sa Missions Bible Church, lalo na sa aming mga kapatid sa Barangay Pitogo, and ng aming mga kamag-anak, and ng aming mga mission partners, especially dun sa mga nanonood kayo, uh, nanonood sa aming Sunday messages, sa mga kaibigan, especially those who are outside, in, outside of Manila, na probably nakakaranas ngayon ng problema sa bagyo. Um, I hope that you are remaining faithful kay God in prayer and we will also pray with you through this rough times. Alam ko na meron ng uh, pandemic, meron pang bagyo, and marami pa na gumugulo sa atin, especially in our country. But let us trust God, pray to God and obey God, and let's leave um, the results to Him. Nagpapasalamat din ako sa Panginoon sa pag-sustain niya sa inyo sa inyong mga pangangailangan and dahil nakakapagpatuloy tayo in fellowship kahit sa Zoom every Tuesday and also sa lahat ng mga ginagawa ng Panginoon sa mga buhay ninyo especially sa youth no um, I'm hoping na patuloy pa rin kayo at magpapatuloy pa rin kayo sa inyong ginagawa every weekend and we are excited to see you uh, this week um, November 8 para sa ating uh, First attempt to gather again after the long time na hindi tayo nagkita-kita. So let's continue to pray and even fast for this. Um, hindi po biro-biro yung po gagawin natin, especially with the threat of COVID-19. So nararapat po talaga na ialang-alang natin ito sa Panginoon. Um, we don't want anyone to catch the illness But more importantly, ayaw naman natin tayo ay matakot at mabuhay sa takot. So, let's have our faith um, work for us in trusting God and also sa wisdom na kailangan natin para tayo ay magkaroon ng organized setup for next week's um, church gathering. So, ganun pa man, uh, alam ko na meron din kayo mga personal praise items sa Panginoon that you want to thank God for. So let me lead you in prayer in this way. Let's close our eyes and bow down our heads. Our Father, God, through Jesus Christ, we are grateful for your sustenance para sa aming mga relationships with our spouses, with our children, with our relatives, with our neighbors, and more importantly, with our churchmates, our fellow Christians, inside and outside the local church. Lord God, we ask for forgiveness kung meron mang kaming nasaktan sa mga salita namin at sa mga uh, gawain namin, Panginoon. I pray that you convict us today and for the rest of our days so that we know kung saan kami nagkakamali and where we need to ask for forgiveness and repentance and seek your aid. Lord, we are all imperfect creatures who are only grateful sa inyong mga blessings na ibinibigay sa amin and today is no different. Panginoon, I am asking for your continuous uh, providence para sa aming lahat sapagkat ikaw lang po ang aming inaasahan. Higit pa po sa material na pangangailangan namin pero mas lalo na po sa mga spiritual na pangangailangan namin. Keep our minds clear about the peace that we have through Jesus Christ alone sa, sa pananampalataya namin sa Kanya. And may we never become self-righteous and judgmental and dismissive of others na wala sa lugar. Panginoon, ilagay niyo po kami sa tama nang sa ganun ay kaluwaluwalhati kami sa iyong pangalan at sa iyong simbahan. I pray in Jesus Christ's name, Amen. So, welcome to Missions Bible Church. At tayo po ay pupunta sa ating Biblia for our Bible passage reading. And 
Tayo po ay nagpapatuloy muli sa serye na pinamagatang Life in Ministry of Jesus in the Four Gospels. And today, we will be reading from Matthew 26, verses 1 to 16. Again, yan po ay sa Mateo, chapter 26, verse 1 hanggang 16. And I will be reading from my King James Bible. And the title para sa ating uh, mensahe for today is The Murder Plot Against Jesus. So, let us begin. Verse 1. When Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said to his disciples, You know that after two days the Passover is coming and the Son of Man will be delivered up to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, whose name was Caiaphas, and plotted together in order to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, Not during the feast, lest there be an uproar among the people. Now when Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came up to him with an alabaster flask of very expensive ointment, and she poured it on his head as he reclined at the table. And when the disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this could have been sold for a large sum and given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray Him. Yan po ang salita ng Diyos. And our big idea for today's Sunday message is, Jesus patiently poured His blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us be like Him and give God all the glory and worship. Again, our big idea for today is, Jesus patiently poured His blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us be like Him and give God all the glory and worship. According to Leroy Four Lines in his book, A Quest for Truth, when the Christian is confronted with the true awesomeness of God, he or she will be ready for true worship and true service. What we believe about the nature and attributes of God is of utmost importance. It pervades every area of life and thought. Any thought and any action that is not consistent with the nature and attributes of God will not stand the test. The four basic values of holiness, love, wisdom, and ideals as human values find their foundation in God. Holiness, love, and wisdom find their foundation in the moral attributes of God. Ideals find their foundation in the overall characteristics of goodness and perfection. God has woven these values into the fabric of truth and life. If we ignore them, we do it to our own hurt. If our life and thought are guided by them, they form the foundation for true thought and a happy life. And totoo nga po na kung ano ang ating paniniwala patungkol sa Diyos ay siya rin magiging dahilan ng ating mga pag-iisip, nararamdaman, gawain, at priorities sa ating buhay. At ito'y applicable in both believers and non-believers alike. Kung ang isang tao ay walang kinikilalang Diyos, napakadali para sa taong ito ang gumawa ng kasamaan ayon sa kanyang kagustuhan at kalooban laban sa kanyang kapwa. Hindi natin sinasabi na lahat ng Kristiyano ay... Uh, Mabuti at ang hindi kristyano ay lubos na halang sa mga bituka nila. Subalit ang lahat ng tao po ay pinanganak sa kasalanan at nagpapatuloy sa kasalanan. 
kahit ang mga Kristiyanong nangangakong mananampalataya sa Diyos ay hindi nakaliligtas sa laso ng kasalanan na naiwan sa ating mga katawan. Bilang Kristiyano, however, tayo ay napatawad, binigyan ng bagong buhay na walang hanggan at binabago ng Diyos ayon sa imahe ng Diyos anak na si Jesus. Subalit, our justification at the moment places us in positional righteousness in that when God looks at us, God sees Christ's complete and perfect atoning work at the cross. But practically speaking, we are still battling the challenges of being set apart and sanctified for God. Ang katotohanan nga ay bilang Kristiyano, tayo ngayon ay durusa laban sa ating mga sariling kahinaan na nagdadala sa atin sa posibilidad na pagkakasala sa parehong batas ng tao at batas ng Diyos. Sapagat ngayon ay nalalaman na natin ang kagandahan ng pag-ibig at grasya ng Diyos sa persona at ministeryo ng kanyang anak na si Jesus. This time, however, we can recognize the dangers of sin and we can now resist sin because of our freed will. Okay, napalaya na. Mas malino na sa atin ang kawalan ng pag-asa ng daanan na dati nating tinatahak at dahil dito ay nagkakaroon tayo sa ating puso't kaisipan dahil na lamang sa pagkilos ng banal na espiritu ng mas higit na kapuutan na ating nararamdaman kapag tayo ay nagkakasala. Ang bigat ng puot na mayroon tayo para sa pinakamaliliit na kamalian na nagagawa natin sa araw-araw ang siyang nagiging tanda ng presensya ng banal na Espiritu ng Diyos sa ating mga buhay na tayo'y kanya ng binabago. Kaya naman, besides being humble, grateful, giving, and always asking for forgiveness, ang tatakpo ng isang tunay na Kristiyano ay ang klase ng kanyang pagsamba sa Panginoong Diyos. But, take note that there can be no true worship of God if there is no repentance towards God. Because only true converted men and women desire to worship God. Only truly converted men and women are enabled to worship God. And only truly converted men and women are accepted by God in their life of worship, even though they are imperfect. Ang pagsamba ng isang nilalang na tunay na sumusuko at nabubuhay sa loob ng grasya ng Diyos at nakatayo sa kapayapaan ng Diyos ay nakikita sa maraming paraan. Ang tunay na pagsamba, however, ay higit pa sa ating mga posisyon sa simbahan, pagiging kilalang kristyano, at mga gawain sa loob ng ministeryo. True worship done for God's glory alone can only begin when a person is converted at the moment of faith in Christ alone, in God's grace alone. At sa atin pong tatalakayan today, in our Sunday message, ito sana ang ating uh, mas maipaliwanag pa ng mabuti sa lahat ng ating mga kapatid at mga kaibigan na nanonood. That said, for today's outline, we have three categories to help us expound our study of the Bible. So the first category is betrayal and death predicted. That we read in Matthew chapter 26 verse 1 to 5. Pangalawang kategorya is the comparison of motives. And we read this in verse 6 to 13 of the same chapter. And yung pangatlong kategorya natin is the deal of death, which we read in verses 14 to 16 of the same chapter as well. Now, beginning in verses 1 to 5, after Jesus rebuked the lawyer and the Pharisees in his final public sermon in Matthew 23, where he gave seven curses or woes against them, Jesus privately foretells the coming destruction of the temple, the rapture, the eschatological judgment of God, and the preparation of his disciples in the Olivet Discourse that we read in Matthew 24 and 25. Here, in Matthew 26, nagpapatuloy po tayo sa pag-ikot ng eksena ng mga pangyayari that would eventually lead up to the crucifixion. And so Jesus, kasama ng kanyang labindalawang alagad, ay nagsabing, Gaya ng alam ninyo, dalawang araw na lamang at Pasko na. Ang anak ng tao ay ipagkakanulo upang ipako sa krus. So again, tayo pa rin po ay nasa ating serye na pinamagatang Life and Ministry of Jesus in the Four Gospels. We are still in the last week of the ministry of Jesus. Bago pa siya ipagkanulo, and this prediction of Jesus might have happened 
in the same day, which is Wednesday, at the end of the Olivet Discourse. And sa pagkakasunod-sunod nga ng mga pangyayari, it seems that for the Apostle Matthew, the writer of the Gospel, the Passion narrative reminds all of the disciples of Jesus that in this age, there will be great testing as we wait for our rapture in the second coming of Jesus. But nevertheless, the Passion story gives us the once and for all complete and perfect sacrifice of Jesus for our sins recorded in history showing us the great and intimate detail of the concrete love of God for men that He created in His own image. Ang Pasko po, na binanggit natin sa talata, na binasa natin, ay ang tinatawag nga nating Passover feast. And this was the first feast, or this is the first feast in the Jewish festival calendar of the Israelites. There are two kinds of Passover in the time of Jesus that the people celebrated. And the Passover that Jesus practiced is believed to be the Passover that commemorated the first Passover just before the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt at the time of Moses. Some Jews call this the Egyptian Passover. Kumbaga, this is the traditional view or the scriptural view which was done on the 14th day of the month of Nisan. This was when every head of a family chose a male lamb of the first year without blemish na kanilang papatayin at kakainin sa gitna ng gabi. Pagkatapos limubog ang araw sa pagitan ng alas 3 ng tanghali hanggang 6 p.m. or total darkness. The 14th day of the month of Nisan, however, is called first day of the Passover. Okay, so yung um, first day of the Passover, the 14th day of the month of Nisan, is occurring or will occur on Thursday. Okay, take note of that. Okay? And the Passover lasts for seven weeks. Prior pa, or um, hindi pa kasali dito tong first day of the Passover. Now, based on the chronology of the passages that we have been following, the Passover that Jesus pertained to here most probably happened again on the first day kung kailan siya dinakip at hindi kung kailan siya ipinapako. Okay? It's two different um, Passovers sa kultura ng mga Hudyo, especially compared sa mga Jews from the northern side or the Galileans and the Jews from the southern side or those who lived in Jerusalem. Mahalaga itong malaman at least so that we can make sense of the series of events that happened simula sa pagdakip ng Panginoon all the way to His resurrection that happened on a Sunday. We also read this in Mark 14 where it says that this day when Jesus predicted His death was two days before the Passover. So the Passover that these verses referred to is the permanent Passover that the Jews in Jerusalem widely practiced which was on a Friday, on the 15th day of Nisan. Yet the Passover, again, that Jesus celebrated with His 12 apostles, happened on a first day night. That's why, when they captured Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, it was right after the Jewish Passover supper. Okay? That was the Last Supper. And that was the perfect place and perfect time to take Jesus into captivity. Now, Jerusalem had five times its population during the Passover feast because of the pilgrimage coming in and riots were known to occur. For this reason, extra Roman troops were garrisoned in Jerusalem during the feast and the Roman governor came from Caesarea to be on hand in case of trouble. Gaya rin ito ng mga ilang kapistahan dito sa Maynila kung napapansin nyo kung saan marami ang nagkakasakitan at kinakailangan ng presensya ng kapulisahan or yung barangay upang panatilihin ang kaayusan. Kaya ganoon na lamang ang pag-iingat ng mga punong pare sa kanilang pagdakip sa Panginoong Jesus and they had to do it at night time. Specifically, nung Thursday night before their permanent Passover na nakasanayan nila that happened during the 15th day of the Nisan. At dahil nga sa matinding galit ng mga religious leaders ng Panginoong Jesus ever since He began His ministry and claimed to have the authority to forgive, to make miracles, and claim to be the Son of God, the Messiah, they have always intended to entrap Him. But this time, by force, but also by stealth and deceit, away from the eyes of the crowds. 
because they were afraid that the crowds deeply supported Jesus, especially after his triumphal entry and his debate against the Sadducees and the Pharisees. This is also because the crowds believed that Jesus was some sort of messianic prophet and because emotions ran high during these festivals, the religious leaders intended to capture Jesus when no one else is able to see it to keep the crowds from causing a riot. Kaya naman sinasabing, ang mga punong pare at ang mga pinuno ng bayan ay nagkakatipon noon sa palasyo ng pinakapunong pare na si Caiaphas. Binalak nilang ipadakip si Jesus ng lihim at ipapatay. Ngunit sinabi nila, huwag sa kapistahan. Baka magkagulo ang mga tao. Ang pagkakatipon naman na ito na minimension sa binasa natin ay ginawa upang gumawa ng plano upang madakip at mahatulan ng kamatayan ng Panginoong Jesus. Bagay na salungat sa batas ng mga Romano at higit pa ay sa batas ng Diyos. Sapagat sa kanila mga puso't isipan ay hinatulan na ng mga punong pare ang Panginoong Jesus bago pa siya litisin. Ang pagpupulong na tinutukoy rito sa talata ay isang formal or sorry, informal na pagpupulong na ginawa ng sikreto upang pagplanuhan ang kasamahan o kasamaan na kanilang binabalak laban sa Panginoon. I mean, they have already set their minds na pag hinuli natin tong si Jesus, ay eh, siya ay ipapapako natin o ipapapatay natin. Regardless of what the outcome of the hearing would happen or would would result to. Okay? So, ganun na sila um, ka-corrupted in their minds na although they are religious leaders, hindi na talaga yung spirit ni God ang uh, nagmumove sa kanila. So, nangyari ito sapagkat sa ilang mga kaunting oh, Sanhedrin, meron mga tagapagsunod ng Panginoon, kagaya nga ni Joseph of Arimathea. And ang iba naman ay hindi sigurado kung how they would assess Jesus Christ. So, they haven't really made up their minds. Pero ang problema dito is yung mga um, nasa taas na ng council or ng Sanhedrin, especially the high priest have already decided against Jesus. So yun yung matindi na influence within the Sanhedrin. And again, ang pagkakatipon ay informal. Ibig sabihin, hindi po alam ng lahat ng miyembro ng Sanhedrin. Yung mga um, nasa taas lang, okay? o yung mga um, inner circle lang ni Caiaphas as a high priest. And yung mga pinuno ng bayan bilang pagtugon nito sa kasikatan at pagsuporta ng madla para sa Panginoong Jesus especially after Jesus refuted the religious leaders in public inside the temple. And ito kasi ay masyado ng uh, malala para sa kanila. It really threatens to usurp their privilege and power. In fact, uh, the New Testament scholar R.T. Franz explains that the manner of Jesus' arrival at the city in chapter 21 verses 1 to 11 had been enough to alert them to his potential as a popular leader and his robust performance in debate with Pharisaic and other leaders during the following days in a temple courtyard would be likely to have won further support. Note his popular reputation as a prophet like John. Given the volatile mood of the crowded city during the festival, a public arrest of Jesus would be very risky. The reaction of the Galileans among the pilgrims would be particularly likely to erupt into violence because Jesus was a Galilean. Yet they could hardly have intended to wait until after the full eighth-day festival period as Jesus would be likely to have left Jerusalem by then. Here we see that Jesus, knowing that death was his mission, faced God's election obediently to be the Messiah, the Savior of the world and His people. Matthew reminds us that whatever the power of the religious leaders had, may it be the whole Sanhedrin or just the few high um, caliber high priests na nadal sa Sanhedrin na yun, who plotted against Jesus, Jesus remained to be sovereign over all of it and moved according to God the Father's plans. In the life and latter part of the ministry of Jesus, we actually see similarities that we find in the life of Joseph, the son of Jacob, na nababasa natin sa Old Testament. Kung saan siya ay nakaranas ng pananakit 
at even yung pagkakakulong mula sa mga sarili niyang kapamilya at iba pa. But because of Joseph's faith in God, he had great wisdom that blessed him. The people around him and fulfilled the promises of God to Israel. So again, because of the faith of Joseph, he had great wisdom that was able to bless himself, kept him safe, blessed Egypt, blessed his family, and the promise of God to build the nation of Israel. In nababasa nga natin ito sa Genesis chapter 50, verses 19 to 21. It says here, But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. And Mga kapatid, Joseph, if you have not yet read about the great story of Joseph, the dreamer, the son of uh, Jacob, is actually a foreshadowing of the Messiah. It napakaganda po basahin ito. I suggest na balikan nyo po ang Genesis 50. And the whole book of Genesis, actually, as it started sa paglikha ng Panginoon sa mundo until the patriarchs na established ng Panginoon to, to build the nation of Israel. So, that said, nakikita natin yung buhay ng Panginoong Jesus, nakikita rin natin yung buhay ni Joseph. Para sa atin naman ngayon, na disipulo ng Panginoong Jesus in the New Testament, nararapat nating pakatandaan na hindi man tayo ang may kapangyarihan at gumahawak sa lahat ng bagay gaya ng poong may kapal, makakasiguro naman tayo na ang Diyos mismo ang nangangalaga sa atin, especially okay, if you are a sincere Bible-believing Christian. At kinakailangan lamang natin na magtiwala sa kanyang salita, sa Biblia, at sa kanyang kapangyarihan na kahit ano man ang mangyari sa atin, ito ay para sa ating ikabubuti. Kahit na ang mga bagay na tinuturi nating unfair o yung parang nakakatapak sa ating puri at karapatan. And this we actually read in Romans chapter 8, verse 27 to 28. Paul says here, And he who searches hearts, which is God, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, speaking of the Holy Spirit indwelling Christians. Because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. By faith, Maging malinaw rin po sa ating kaisipan na maraming bagay ang ating haharapin na kaakibat ng ating posisyon at tungkulin dito sa mundo bilang isang Kristiyano na sumusunod sa mga alituntunin ng Diyos sa Biblia. Nakikipag-ugnayan tayo sa bawat isa sa loob ng simbahan, lalo na sa ating mga elders sa loob ng lokal na simbahan. Nararapat din nating isaisip at isa puso na ang paminsan-minsang pagsubok na ating uh, nararanasan against our patience, sakripisyo ng ating mga oras, kakayahan, karapatan, pag-aari at iba pa, pati na rin yung ating uh, pagbibitaw sa ating mga pride at self-righteousness ay kaakibat ng ating pagiging kristyanong asawa, magulang, anak, estudyante, empleyado, at kung saan man tayo tinawag at tinatawag pa ng Panginoon. The Apostle Paul encourages us in Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 17, saying, Put on then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you. So you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. 
And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Hindi ito madali, mga kapatid. Yung binasa natin, kung paano natin magagawa ito. Sa katunayan, ito ay sobrang hirap at imposible kung hindi lamang sa banal na Espiritu ng Diyos na napapasa atin today. Gaya ng Panginoon, personally, as human beings, we have our own struggles. And for me, it is with patience because sometimes ako po ay nagiging mainipin sa mga tao na kapaligid sa akin at sa mga pangyayari sa aking buhay na wala akong control. Even though I know God's character should result in trust and should help me surrender my worries, unreasonable expectations, and fears. These three are the causes of most of our disappointments and we need to give this up to God by faith upang tayo ay makaiwas sa frustrations ng buhay, especially when we do not get what we expect from other people, especially the people that we love. Thomas Oden shares the same sentiment regarding Jesus that in Judas's betrayal, Peter's denial, the Sanhedrin's trial, the mockery of soldiers, and insults by onlookers, the suffering Jesus endured, involved the full extent of human rejection, hatred, abuse, deception, and vindictiveness. Kumbaga sa madaling salita, kung meron mang dapat na mawala ng pasensya, mag-give up, at yun naman yun, umayaw, it's Jesus. Because He's God. He doesn't deserve what He experienced. Pero ginawa niya yun. And so should we, okay? Just like Jesus, who was at the receiving end of the wickedness of the people that He loved and expected to receive Him, We too, as Christians, as human beings, as His disciples, the followers of the Son of God, fall into the same disappointments from each other. But the example of Jesus Christ should still remind us and should always remind us that if God has shown us how to have grace, mercy, and sacrificial love to all sinful and unloving men and women like us, Then, mga kapatid, we have nothing to fear or to hinder us. And we should say, as Christians, that we are to be the first to embrace and act upon the life of Jesus na ating tinanggap noong tayo ay naging Kristiyano. Okay? Sometimes we falter, nakakalimot tayo, and talagang umaabot tayo sa pasensya natin, lalo na sa stress na na dala ng pandemic, ng corruption sa government, at yung overall wickedness ng mundo, at dagdag mo pa dyan yung kahirapan na pamumuhay ng banal sa loob ng uh, magulong mundo. Also, yung uh, nagiging uh, stuck tayo sa loob ng bahay natin because of the quarantine, hindi tayo makaalis, lagi yung mga kilos natin pigil. Lahat yan nakakadagdag psychologically and wearing us out mentally, physically, and even spiritually. Pero pinapaalala sa atin ng Panginoon through the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 6, verse 4 to 6, speaking of the believer's baptism, especially sa mga Kristiyano kong mga kapatid na nabautismohan na, no? this is the essence of our baptism. Para meron tayong binabalikan on what it means to be a Christian. And sa mga magpapabaptize pa, I pray na pag-isipan mo ito ng mabuti and makita mo talaga yung halaga of baptism. Okay? Sinasabi dito sa Roma chapter 6 verse 4 to 6 ni Apostol Pablo, Sa makatuwid, tayo'y namatay na at nailibing na kasama niya sa pamamagitan ng bautismo upang kung paanong binuhay muli si Kristo sa pamamagitan ng dakilang kapangyarihan ng Ama, tayo rin ay magkaroon ng panibagong buhay. Sapagat kung nakasama tayo ni Kristo sa isang kamatayang katulad ng kanyang kamatayan, tiyak na tayo ay makakasama rin niya sa muling pagkabuhay at nakatulad ng kanyang muling pagkabuhay. It, this speaks of the resurrection. Alam natin na ang dati nating pagkatao ay naipako na sa krus kasama niya upang mamatay ang ating makasalanang pagkatao at nang hindi na tayo maalipin pa ng kasalanan. Dahil po riyan, mga kapatid, 
our big idea for today's Sunday message is Jesus patiently poured His blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us be like Him and give God all the glory and worship. Now, moving forward sa verses 6 hanggang verse 13, noong nasa Bethania si Jesus sa bahay ni Simon na ketongin, lumapit sa kanya ang isang babaeng may dalang sisidlang alabastro na puno ng napakamahal na pabango. Ibinuhos ito sa ulo ni Jesus habang siya ay nakaupo sa may hapag. So, pagkatapos magbigay ng prediksyon ang Panginoong Jesus patungkol sa kanyang pagkakanulo at uh, kamatayan on Wednesday na nabasa natin sa verses 1 to 5, minabuting isunod sa kasulatan ng gospel writer na si Mateo ang pagbuhos ng pabango sa ulo ng Panginoong Jesus in between the passage to give us a background of how the people in Jesus' life and ministry responded to Him and His near sacrificial death at the cross. Especially nung papalapit na yung araw, nung pagdakip, pagkakanulo, at yung pagpapapaku sa Kanya. And again, this is uh, significant because ito ay hindi um, in chronological order. So there is a reason bakit isiningit ni Mateo sa gitna ito ng mga pangyayari. And tignan natin bakit. Ang pangyayari po kasing ito happened at the house of Simon the leper, kagaya ng binasa natin. But it was before Jesus entered Jerusalem for the last time. This was before His triumphal entry. So again, this was before the last week of the ministry of Jesus. So ang tanong, bakit siya pinasok sa gitna at Wednesday? Dito, nalalaman natin ang lahat ng detali na nabibigay ng mas malaking konteksto at kulay sa kabuha ng storya because of this passage. Ang pangyayari pong ito ay mas kilala sa tawag na the anointing of Jesus in Bethany. It was actually a prophetic sign that pointed the certainty of what will happen in the next days to come. So that's one reason bakit niya isiningit yun sa gitna. And it was also a testimony of the faith and acceptance of the true disciples of Jesus towards His offering for their salvation. Especially the family of Simon the leper. Okay? So ito yung pangalawang purpose. It's to showcase how true disciples responded to the news na ipapako si Kristo after a few days and He will be resurrected and yun ang pangunahing mission niya. How to save Israel and the whole world. Some disciples and some followers who have followed Jesus in His ministry did not like this at all and they did not accept this. And they left Christ. But This is the difference with the family of Simon the leper. So, who is the Simon the leper? At bakit ngayon lang namin siya naririnig? Well, Simon the leper and his family lived in Bethany. Bethany was one of those villages near Jerusalem where Passover pilgrims could spend the night with hosts. And we have learned from our previous message when Jesus cursed the fig tree and did not have fruit, that Jesus was staying in the poor houses of Bethany. So again, the word Bethany, yung place na yon, means Beth as house, and Ani meaning poor. So it's uh, it's a row house, kumbaga parang ghetto kung, kung tawagin natin. It's poor settlement. Specifically, he stayed in the house of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. At yun yung nabasa natin before. However, supplemental information can be read identifying the owner of the house as Simon the leper, someone who was probably healed by Jesus prior to his staying. Concluding that Simon the leper then can be the father or the guardian of the siblings Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. The fact that their mother was not mentioned would probably mean that she already had passed away. As a family, they welcomed Jesus and His disciples wholeheartedly in their poor home. And if you are uh, uh, 
leper, obviously, you cannot work. You are isolated from the community, even to your own family. And your family is left there alone. At dahil posibilidad nga na wala silang nanay, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were orphans. Okay? They lived on their own. Probably people were just merely helping them in the community, in the neighborhood. But technically, in the village or in the settlement of poor people, they should definitely be at the top 10 most poor people sa loob ng lugar na yun because, because they have nothing and they have no one, literally. We also read from John chapter 12 that the woman who broke the flask and poured the expensive perfume was none other than Mary, the youngest daughter of Simon the leper. So again, we read this from John chapter 12 that the woman who broke the flask and poured the expensive perfume made of spikenard was Mary, the sister of Martha and Lazarus. And a spikenard or Syrian nard was a highly valuable ingredient of a perfume. It may have come from the pasture lands of the Himalayas. It is an aromatic oil extracted from an East Indian plant with the scientific name Nardostakis yadamansi and was extremely expensive and is worth the annual salary of a common laborer's wage. So, bakit ko sinasabi to? What's the importance? How does this affect the actual event? Well, being costly, these perfumes were luxury items. And for a poor family, like the family of Simon the leper, it is highly likely that this alabaster perfume was their only treasured family possession. I mean, they probably have kept this for the for emergencies kung talagang gipit na gipit na sila. Katumbas ito, siguro ng buong ipon ng isang mahirap na pamilya na tinatago at pinakaiingatan, especially kapag may mga sakuna or nawalan ka ng trabaho, may, nag, may nangyari, may nagkasakit, may naaksidente, so forth. But, you see that the, the, the context here is Mary uh, poured this expensive perfume to Jesus, on Jesus. Now, in Jewish culture, it was customary uh, to cleanse the feet of guests uh, with water, obviously, as soon as they enter the home and wash their hands before and after meals. But to anoint the head is reserved for important guests. Mary's anointing of Jesus then was an extraordinary gesture of complete worship and surrender of earthly life to God by faith in Jesus, seen in breaking the alabaster jar and pouring out everything in it, enough to wash the hands and the feet and bless the head of our God. You see, Simon the leper and his family were completely devoted to God. At nakikita natin ito sa one act of worship na ito recorded in the book of Matthew. And again, they were completely devoted to God na kahit sa kahirapan ng kanilang buhay, ang natatanging kayamanan at siguridad ng kanilang pamilya ay nasa mga kamay ng Panginoong Jesus. Literally, when Mary poured the alabaster perfume sa Panginoon. Kaya naman, nababasa rin natin ang puso ng Diyos ay malapit sa mga mahirap na kagaya nila sa libro ng mga awit, chapter 34, verse 18. Sinasabi rito, ang Panginoon ay malapit sa may pusong wasak at inililigtas ang mga may bagbag na diwa. You see, Mary need not to break the alabaster jar kasi meron naman yung ano eh, uh, opening eh. Pero siguro kasi maliit yung butas ng lalagyan at gusto nga niyang hugasan ng paa at basbasan ng ulo ng Diyos, kaya niya ito binasa. I mean, sobrang gusto niyang i-worship si Lord na parang ang tagal lumabas ng, ano, ng perfume, sinira niya na. And because her anointing of Jesus was an expression of her worship and the worship of her family, to anoint the feet and head of Jesus and extravagantly spend all that they had to glorify the Lord for the great privilege of staying in their home and considering them as His friends even though they are poor for laying down His life for them and for laying down His life for them. So, ginawa niya to because of these 
possible reasons. At ito talaga yung tanda at tatak ng isang totoong Kristiyano who has a heart and mind of worship towards God. At ito nga ay isang pinakamagandang example ng tunay na pagsamba ng isang Kristiyano sa Diyos. What is also striking here, mga kapatid, is the heart of the Lord for this poor family of Simon the leper or the previous leper and his children. That at the close of his ministry, at this important time of his life, Jesus chose to stay and have fellowship, not with the religious leaders who wanted him dead, not just simply with the financially challenged, for there were many of those in his time, but of the people who were truly poor in material possession and in spirit, who had only Jesus as their most valuable treasure yet were more than willing to give up everything they had in this lifetime, in this earthly lifetime, simply because of their gratefulness for the presence of the Lord in their lives. And so Jesus chose to be with them so that He could bless them. You see, if we take a closer look sa buhay ng pamilyang ito ni Simon, makikita natin na marami na silang pinagdaanan and we verily get a great, beautiful family portrait of what God is really looking for in men. Which can be read also in the first four blessings of the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. It says here, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. You see, mga kapatid, if you could relate sa buhay ni Simon and you think na mahirap lang ako, paano, paano kikilos ang Panginoon sa buhay ko, paano ako gagamitin ng Panginoon eh, mahina ako sa English, mahina ang kaisipan ko, hindi ko alam yung mga uh, theology at mga kung ano-ano pa about um, studying the Bible. Kapatid, you have the Holy Spirit with you when you accepted Jesus Christ by faith. Kung magsisipag ka, if you are sincere, God will assist you. God, you see, God, he doesn't require the smartest, okay? He may use smart people, but that is not his requirement. Nor does he require the richest, okay? God doesn't save and call to service those who see themselves as qualified and are of great positions, which rarely understand and acknowledge their limitations and need of God's grace. But you see, the mark of true Christianity is seen in how much of God's Word had made its home in the person. Ulitin ko po. The mark of true Christianity is seen in how much of God's Word have made its home in the person. And that through Christ, we become acceptable in the eyes of God the Father and this is not of ourselves. But you see, not everyone had the same heart towards the worship of Jesus sa mga pangyayari ngayon. In fact, some of his disciples, namely Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him, felt angry at the extravagant gesture of Mary's external worship to the Lord. He was angry and influenced some of the apostles because he thought that the expensive perfume could have been sold for money and could have been given as help to the poor. But on another note, the Apostle John exposes the true heart of Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus. And he said this not because he loved the poor or that he was pious and saw their need, but because he was angry and he was a thief and would rather have sold the expensive perfume and have stolen the money. Kaya nung nalaman niya uh, sa Mateo 16 na kailangan pumunta ng Panginoon sa Jerusalem at magtiis ng maraming bagay sa kamay ng matatanda na mga punong pare at mga eskriba, siya ay papatayin at muling bubuhayin sa ikatlong araw. When this happened in Matthew 16, Judas Iscariot most likely have decided already what he would do when this happens. Once he heard this, Judas may have already decided in his heart 
that he was going to leave Jesus at magkaroon man lamang siya ng konsuelo sa oras na kanyang uh, sinasayang sa ministero ng Panginoon. Eh. Hindi naman pala magiging hari ang Panginoong Jesus. Eh. So, bakit ko pa siya tatawag ng Panginoon at bakit ko pa siya pagsisilbihan? Eh, hindi ko naman makukuha yung benefits na inaasahan ko. And this is most likely the mentality of Judas at this time. Siguro sa isip-isip ni Judas, inaasahan niya ang Panginoong Hesus na maging isang mandirigmang tagapagligtas ng Israel mula sa mga Romano at magiging hari sa panahon na yaon at siya ay magkakaroon ng posisyon sa kanyang kaharian. Judas, based on the text, may have been looking for his own advantage. That he did not truly follow Jesus for who he is and what the gospel meant. This also proves that Judas never really knew God as an Israelite who grew up in the Old Testament scriptures and traditions. Unlike the other apostles, namely Nathaniel or Peter, John or Andrew or James, and the rest of the apostles who remained faithful to the Lord. Though they were imperfect, they even scattered and left the Lord nung namatay siya, but eventually they came back and they continued in their faith to the Lord. Judas Iscariot may have meant that he was from the Judean town of Karyoth. That's the name or the meaning of his last name, Iscariot, or man from Karyoth. But he was not a true Israelite like their patriarch Abraham, and not like the family of Simon the leper, whom God considered righteous because of their genuine faith. As early as the Galilean ministry, After the feeding of the 5,000 and presenting himself to the crowd as the bread of heaven, Jesus said regarding Judas in John chapter 6, After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. And again, ito yung pagkatapos sabihin ng Panginoon na, I am the bread of heaven, kailangan nyo kayo din yung katawan ko. And nagulat yung mga tao sa sinabi niya, sa talinhaga niya, dahil they took it very literally. And they did not know that they must place their faith in him at yun ang punto ng Panginoon. So again, Ito, as early as John chapter 6, eh, nakita na ng Panginoon kung sino talaga si Judas. Again, sabi niya, After this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. And hindi ito yung 12, okay? Uh, these are the other disciples that followed him all throughout the town uh, of Israel. Simon Peter, uh, sorry, so Jesus said to the 12, Do you want to go away as well? Tanong ng Panginoon. Simon Peter answered him, And this, uh, he said, in behalf of the apostles, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. And totoo naman yan. But this is the interesting part. Jesus answered them, Did I not choose you the twelve? And yet one of you is a devil? He spoke of Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, for he, one of the twelve, was going to betray him. The apostle Peter was actually wrong in his assumption that all of the twelve apostles, including him, were in unison towards their worship of Jesus Christ. So the Lord corrected him in his assertion and exposes that actually one of you, one of the true, or one of the disciples, one of the twelve apostles, were not a true follower and he knew it from the beginning and interestingly if you notice uh, the name of Judas's father is Simon similar to the name Simon the leper and this was a common name in Israel so that's not the unique part but having the same name for the fathers of these presenters to Christ Mary presented the genuine worship that God desires the genuine worship that comes from true conversion. While Judas, a son of another Simon, presented nothing of worship towards God and was even the betrayer of the Son of God. And this is because there is no true conversion in him. And so Jesus concludes his anointing in Bethany by telling everyone inside the home of Simon the leper that, Why do you trouble the woman? Speaking of Mary who poured the alabaster perfume to the Lord. Again, why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, but you will not always have me. 
In pouring this ointment on my body, she has done it to prepare me for burial. Truly I say to you, wherever this gospel is proclaimed in the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. So again, the big idea, mga kapatid, is Jesus patiently poured His blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us be like Him and give God all the glory and worship. So sa ating pagpapatuloy, in verses 14 to 16, in the deal of death, obviously may idea na tayo what this means, Ganoon na nga ang nangyari sa pagpapatuloy ng istorya after Jesus predicted his betrayal and death. Judas makes an arrangement with the high priest Caiaphas and the chief priests of the temple. And sinasabi sa talata na isa sa labing dalawa na tinatawag na Judas Iscariote ang nagpunta sa mga punong pare at nagsabi, Anong ibibigay ninyo sa akin kung ibibigay ko siya sa inyo? Speaking of the Lord Jesus. Hindi man lang pinangalanan, di ba? At kanilang ipinagtimbang siya ng tatlumpong pirasong pilak. At mula noon ay humanap siya ng pagkakataon na may pagkanulo si Jesus. Mga kapatid, 30 pieces of silver is not a big sum. Hindi ito malaking halaga. Katumbas lang po ito ng isang buwang sweldo ng manggagawa sa panahon ng mga apostol at mababa lang po yun. Sa ganitong paraan, nakikita natin na napakababa lamang talaga ng tingin ni Judas sa Panginoong Jesus. And definitely, nagprogreso pa yung pagkababa ng tingin niya sa Jesus when he found out na hindi ka pala magiging hari today. Iaalay mo pala ang buhay mo sa cross. Aba, hindi yan, hindi yan ang ina-expect ko na Mesiya. And talagang nakikita natin dito sa pagkakanulo ng, 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 ng Judas na ito. Even in the amount that he received, which is a mere monthly wage of a daily laborer. Napakababa po talaga nito. And again, uh, we really see the wickedness of the heart of Judas. At hindi ito kind of wickedness na nakuha mo lang in one day, naisipan mo lang. This kind of wickedness is something that brews in the mind and heart of a person for a long period of time. And the fact na kasama mo si Jesus, the Son of God, ay hindi ka natibag, hindi nagbago, hindi lumambot yung puso mo, hindi luminaw yung isip mo, may mali dun sa tao ngayon. And, and this is really who Judas was. And some famous preachers, uh, unfortunately, have thought that this passage is a story of God meticulously preordaining the murderous plots of the Sanhedrin and the betrayal of Judas. And again, this is because, yun nga, alam ng pan- Panginoon na mangyayari and because of the character of Judas that he is uh, a betrayer and he is uh, a criminal in the highest degree of of slaying innocent blood and not just any innocent blood but the blood of the Son of God. And again, this is being taught as a uh, as an evidence of meticulous preordaining of uh, God's um, will sa mga tao and His pla- overall plans. And instead of simply permitting it for the greater purpose God intended in the willful sacrificial death of His Son, Jesus. Some would incorrectly teach that God was and is the primary cause of the sins of men involved in the murder of Jesus and of the sins of the world. To think this way poses actually a great misinterpretation of God's nature itself and by intuition and scripture is simply not the case. At ganito nga ang sinasabi sa Biblia patungkol sa kabanala ng Panginoong Diyos. Um, one example of this passage na alam natin na God is good, God is holy, wala siyang dungis o kamalian, wala siyang kasalanan. And he is God because He is God and He is holy, wala siyang kasalanan. And never siya na magkakaroon ng sin in Him. In fact, that's the reason why sin separates us from God because there is no sin in God. So we read in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 o sa Tagalog Bible, Unang Juan chapter 1, verse 5. Sinasabi rito, At ito ang mensahe na aming narinig sa Kanya at sa inyo'y aming ipinahahayag na ang Diyos ay liwanag at sa Kanya'y walang anumang kadiliman. 
You see, God being in control over all His creation and the free actions of His creatures, gaya ng pangyayaring ito in the life of Judah, sa buhay ng mga uh, chief priests and the high priests na nagbalak, na dakipin ang Panginoon, in, ipapatay siya, is biblically and accurately understood as God's foreknowledge or knowing of all things even before they happen. And that He is powerful over all these and can bring greater good and glory even from the deliberate sins of free creatures. This is what we call the biblical sovereignty of God. The Evangelical Dictionary of Theology of Theology defines it as the biblical teaching that God is king, supreme ruler, and lawgiver of the entire universe. And if you have this book, uh, the Evangelical Dictionary of Theology, this is found in page 1038. Now, all Orthodox Christianity affirms this clear biblical truth. I mean, everyone knows that God is God, that He is King of kings and Lord of lords, that He is the creator of all, and He is God. And there is no God above Him, below Him, before Him, after Him, and there is no God besides Him. We all agree. Okay? Yet some would go beyond and reconstruct the definition of sovereignty into what we call theistic or divine determinism, which says that all events, including man's behavior, are caused or determined by God. And again, this is from the Evangelical Dictionary of Theology in page 429. This would logically entail that God is the cause of all sins because he or she was predetermined to sin apart from his or her own choice, speaking of uh, free creatures that God made in his image. This would also mean that man does not simply have a sinful nature. Kasi we believe na yung pagkakasala ni Adan at Eva ay nagbigay sa atin ng uh, uh, sirang pagkatao. Okay? Uh, and more, we are morally depraved, kumbaga. But this is not speaking of a mere sinful nature. When we think of divine determinism, what we are really saying is that he or she, the person, is incapable of doing anything at all aside from God strongly causing the person to will and or to act. To think of God this way may sound pious to some, but would be actually inconsistent to the basic doctrines of Christianity that God is holy. Jacob Arminius explains it best in this way in his Declaration of Sentiments. He says, Nothing is done without God's ordination. Ito yung kasabihan. Nothing is done without God's ordination. If by the word ordination is signified that God appoints things of any kind to be done, this mode of enunciation is erroneous. And it follows as a consequence from it that God is the author of sin. But if it signify that whatever it be that is done, God ordains it to a good end. The terms in which it is conceived are in that case correct. So, para sa kanya, nothing is done without God's ordination. He believes that. Jacob Arminius believes that. And so do we. But what he is saying is, if by the word ordination, it means that God appoints things of any kind to be done. I mean like, buong buhay from creation, ang sakahuli-hulihan ng buhay sa mundo, it's according to the determination of God. Then that would also include, gaya ng sinabi niya, that God is the author of sin. But God is not the author of sin. We already know that God is holy by scripture and by natural intuition. But the correct understanding is that whatever it be that is done, God ordains it to a good end. Yan ang biblical understanding of God's ordination. At yan nga yung binasa natin kanina sa Romans chapter 8. So, basahin natin to jog our memory. So, again, that is found in Romans chapter 8, verse 27 to 28. It says, And he who searches hearts 
knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. In 28, he says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. Yan po yung ibig sabihin ng God ordains all things to good. And that means that God is omnipotent over all our decisions in life. That even though we are free, God is in control of the result. He can turn it around into a good thing and make it glorifying for His name's sake. So, this means Jesus, before all of this ever happened, and even before the religious leaders all met at the palace of Caiaphas, the high priest, He already knew what was going to happen. And hindi ito lamang dahil siya ang anak ng Diyos and He is omniscient, He knows all things, or He just foresaw it, but because it was ordained and planned by God even before the world was ever created, that He will appease God's wrath for all the sins of the world in this miraculous way. So, ang preordained or determined na nakikita natin sa crucifixion ng Panginoon, even dun sa pagkakanulo at betrayal ni Judas, and yung sa wickedness ng mga high priest, is, is the process of how God saves us all, that He would permit and would allow sinful men to touch Jesus and crucify Him. But it's not that God controlled these men and caused them to sin. They did that on their own. That's why they are responsible for their sins. Ganito nga ang nababasa natin sa Hebreo, chapter 10, verse 4 to 7. Speaking of the predetermination of God the Father for the role of Jesus in the salvation of men. He says here, For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, He said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body have you prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written of me in the scroll of the book. At muli pa ay sinasabi ito ng Apostol Pedro sa unang Pedro chapter 1 verse 18 to 21. Tinubos kayo hindi sa pamamagitan ng mga bagay na nasisira tulad ng ginto o pilak, kung hindi sa pamamagitan ng mahalagang dugo ni Kristo. Siya ay tulad ng korderong walang dungis at kapintasan. Itinalaga siya ng Diyos bago panilikha ang daigdig. At alang-alang sa inyo ay ipinahayag sa mga huling araw na ito. Dahil kay Kristo, sumasampalataya kayo sa Diyos na sa Kanya'y muling bumuhay at nagparangal. Kaya't ang inyong pananampalataya at ang pag-asa ay nasa Diyos. So sa paglabit ni Judas sa mga punong pare ng templo, ginagawa lamang ni Judas ang nilalaman ng kanyang makasalanang puso't isipan. Ito ay nalalaman ng Diyos noon pa man, ngunit ito ay kanyang pinayagan. Sapagat nalalaman niyang sa ganitong paraan ay maisasakatuparan ng kanyang higit na mabuting plano, which is yung kaligtasan ng lahat ng mananampalataya kay Jesus Christ. Now, yung sa binasa natin sa unang Pedro, chapter 1, verse 18 to 21, specifically in verse 20, this speaks of election for a certain or specific role na gusto ng Panginoon na mangyari. And patatalakayin natin to in the next uh, messages kung madaanan pa natin, especially next week. I think baka madaanan natin siya. But if you want to know more about it, um, you, you are free to visit our website. You could actually check yung mga materials namin doon, especially um, our statement of beliefs and also other sources um, that could help you. Again, sa paglapit ni Judas, sa mga punong pare ng templo, ginagawa lamang niya yung natural sa kanya. And although lahat ng tao kasama ni Judas ay may mahalay na pagkatao, in uh, the English language, we call it morally depraved, 
tayo ay nakatatanggap ng pangunang grasya mula sa Diyos, which we also call prevenient grace mula sa Diyos upang tulungan tayong sumuko sa kanyang pagkakahari ng ating mga buhay. So, we, we don't really do anything meritorious or we don't really add anything to our salvation. What God is doing is He is working a supernatural work in us so that we would be led to surrender to the working of the Holy Spirit and appropriate receive Jesus Christ as, as our Lord, personal, and Savior. At ang pagkakanulo niya sa Panginoon, speaking of Judas again, ay tanda ng kanyang pagtanggi sa grasyang ito. At ito ay uh, bukal na pagkakasala mula sa kanyang sariling kagustuhan. It's not like God didn't help him or God determined him to be that way. But God gave him grace and you may ask, Papaano? Well, spending three and a half years with Christ. And that is the greatest grace that you could ever have to be with the incarnate Lord. And itong klase ng pagkakasalang ito ay again mula sa sarili niyang desisyon. Ganito nga ang relasyon ng soberanya ng Diyos at ang kalayaan na kanyang ibinigay sa mga tao na nilikha ayon sa kanyang imahe. And we call this limited independence. Okay? We're not independent from God, but being created in the image of God like Him, we are rational and moral free creatures. Yun nga lang, we are morally depraved. We have a sinful nature and we need the initiate and continuous grace of God even before we even desire or think about God in a salvific way. We need God's grace first. Okay? But this is uh, it does not excuse us from placing our faith in God. This makes sin and yung pagtanggi sa grasyang ito truly sinful and man truly responsible and culpable before a holy God on judgment day. Kaya natin nasasabi na mali yung ginawa ni Judas because he could have done otherwise. If he could have not done otherwise and if he was determined to do that, how could we say that he is wrong? He, he wasn't able to do anything about it. But because he is responsible, he could be culpable for his wrongdoing. Just think of it this way. Uh, a simple analogy. You're in, in a court. Nasa, nasa gitna ka ng uh, courtroom. No? Nililitis ka. May judge, may prosecutor, tapos meron kang uh, abogado, ikaw yung defendant. At binibigyan ka ng uh, sentensya, no? Merong merong akusasyon na ginawa mo, krimen. Pero this is a uh, this is the twist and this is speaking or coming from me being a uh, uh, special needs uh, teacher before, no? Ang twist is you have a mental disability. You are a person of mental disability. And hindi mo alam kung ano yung ginawa mo and nakagawa ka ng krimen, let's say malalang krimen, that would really uh, be a criminal case that, that would require you years in imprisonment. And if you are the judge, would you hold that person who is mentally disabled uh, culpable or responsible sa krimen na ginawa niya? Of course not. He is not in the right mind. And if human beings, human judges can discern if a man is responsible for a crime or not or if he is in the right mental state to be culpable for such a such an act then how much more a holy god who will give us a righteous and holy judgment that's just a simple analogy but again if you would like to know more about these things because this is not really our topic at nadaanan lang natin ito uh, in terms of explaining how Jesus Christ knew na siya ay pagkakanulo and si Jesus ay Diyos pero nagawa pa rin ni Judas yung uh, ginawa niya siya pa rin ay napako sa Cruz this is only um, dahil part siya nung passage it's, it's not the, the focus of our message but we have to deal with it so that being said Our big idea for today is 
Jesus patiently poured His blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us be like Him and give God all the glory and worship. Again, our big idea is, Jesus patiently poured His blood for the forgiveness of our sins. Let us be like Him and give God all the glory and worship. Now, sa ating pong pagkatapos, um, the bottom line of our Sunday message, there are three things that we can learn from today's Sunday sermon that we will surely be helped if we apply it. Okay? Matutulungan talaga tayo nito if gagawin natin to. And if you are a non-Christian or if you have not yet come to uh, believe in Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior or if you if you have not yet understood the gospel of Christ that as we read kanina or as you have seen dun sa slides natin of the four truths or yung um, klase ng gospel na pinepresent sa atin ng Panginoon you can communicate with us okay and talk to us in our website or in our Facebook page. Pero today, if you would like to know more about how this message applies, if you become a Christian or in the life of a Christian, number one, obey God like Jesus. Okay? Obey God like Jesus. And I'm saying this because only people who are um, worked on by the Holy Spirit and have been converted and regenerated by the Holy Spirit can truly obey God like Jesus. Ang pamamaraan kasi ng pamumuhay ng Panginoong Jesus, especially in the way that He was patient with people that plotted His death, kahit na alam naman niya ang lahat ng kasamaan ng puso ng mga tao, demands from us a life of obedience and trust to God identical to His to his obedience regardless of our circumstances okay and god has already given sufficient grace and that is himself okay as well as his word in the bible reading and meditating on the word of god in the bible then will reveal god's plans for us and would supernaturally give us peace through the holy spirit and the examples of christ coming from a clear mind and to empower us to obey Him and even the authorities that God placed above us for the greater good that He intended. Even the authorities that we don't really want to obey or follow or we think is not worth uh, their position. But God commands us to obey them. So Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1-3 to convicts us in this way. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Pangalawa naman po, in the Christian life, in how we apply our learnings for today, is worship God like Mary. Mary, the daughter of Simon the leper. And speaking of witnesses, we find one of the greatest examples of faithfulness and worship of a Christian sa buhay ni Simon at ng kanyang pamilya. Totoong dapat nga nating tulungan ng mga may hirap sa loob at labas ng ating simbahan, gaya ng nereklamo ni Judas, as a way to share them the gospel. Subalit, sa pagkakataong ito, in what we see in the worship of the family of Simon, particularly the gesture of Mary, okay? sa pagkakataong ito, ang mahirap na pamilya ni Simon ay nagpakita ng kagalakan at pagsamba direkta sa Panginoon. Sapagkat nalalaman nila that it was a special occasion na kakaunti na lamang ang araw na makakasama nila ang Panginoon physically. And they recognized and were convicted that it was a time of praising to God and adoration to God for His goodness to choose to spend His time with them and to 
offer. Let his life be spent for theirs. Okay? And this was an act of gratitude and worship towards the Lord. Again, we should also worship God in this way that when we are trusting Jesus, we can show it in our willful and sacrificial spiritual and material offerings. Pangatlo, God is sovereign. Now again, we now understand the biblical way of understanding the word sovereignty. Nothing at all can happen without God's permission. God knows all of these things and He is above all of these things. But not everything is causally determined by God. There are some, but not all. God is holy and there is no sin in Him. However, as judgment, God will permit bad things to happen to all of us, including Christians, if it's necessary. But God is not the author of sin, okay? And this He does for the greater purposes of His plans. At nakikita nga natin ito when He judged Israel, when He allowed uh, Babylon, Greece, but Rome to conquer Israel because of their harlotry, because of their idolatry, because of their rebellion against God. And even in AD 70, when God destroyed the Jerusalem temple, it's because they crucified Christ. So these things, God may have ordained, but it's not directly caused by God, but permitted by God. Okay? In this purpose, is always to lead and keep us in Jesus Christ. If God allows certain bad things to happen in your life, this is for a greater good, for a greater purpose. And again, it always is to lead us and to keep us in Jesus Christ. And because men are responsible for their actions, including us, of course, and as the example from the Bible passage, Judas and the chief priest, There is a greater gospel call that God wants to be proclaimed to everyone. Because a person can actually turn and repent, there must be a a sincere presentation of the gospel to them. Hindi yung you're presenting the gospel, but in the back of your mind, alam mo na hindi naman siya magiging kristyano if God did not elect him, then that's not a genuine love. That's not a genuine call for repentance. But because we believe that people can actually do otherwise by the help, the aid of the grace of God, which is the Holy Spirit working in us, then we must share the gospel. Definitely, we must share the gospel. And as I close, let me leave you with a word of encouragement from Baptist pastor Franklin Siegler in his book, Christian Worship. And this is in regards to a theology of worship. And this is what he says. Christian worship is God-centered. God took the initiative in worship by creating man for fellowship with himself. As the ground of being, he is the source and sustainer of life. As sovereign ruler, God confronts man. He comes to man as the one worthy of worship. And because he is worthy, he stands in judgment over man and makes demands upon him. As man responds in worship, God allows him to experience new manifestations of His goodness and His love. At dyan po nagtatapos ang ating mensahe. I hope that you were blessed. And bago po tayo mag-goodbye uh, sa isa't isa, tayo po ay umuko muna sa panalangin. So, mga kaibigan, bago tayo manalangin, if you again would like to know more about the gospel and if you have any questions about the message for today's uh, sermon or if you just wanted to talk to someone please don't hesitate to communicate uh, to us sa aming website in our facebook page but for our brothers and sisters in missions bible church our mission partners and our fellow christians in the universal church especially din sa mga bible study groups na nanonood sa ating mensahe today that we attend 
Let's pray in this way, mga kapatid. Father God, I am grateful for the humility that you work in all of us in studying your Bible and being sensitive to the leading of your Holy Spirit and to listening to each other with grace and pagpapatawad and pagsasakripisyo and living and obeying God like your son Jesus. Thank you for teaching us this today. Lord, I lift you up all of our needs, our physical and spiritual needs. I lift you up our church gathering this coming Sunday, November 8. I pray that this message that we have learned and heard today would grow in us all throughout the week so that kami po ay malalagay sa kung saan nyo man po kami gustong ilagay in your purposes and plans. Father, as Christians, we are grateful for your grace and the working of your Holy Spirit which led us to stand in peace or at peace with you in Christ. And sa pagpapatuloy ng iyong gracia in the indwelling of the Holy Spirit that leads us to the completion of our salvation at the very end. I pray, Lord God, that we would be able to worship you like Simon the leper and his family and in great acts of worship. We may have not so much na pera, talento, even karunungan or influence, but I pray, Lord God, that if you command us to do something, we would obey it immediately. And humihingi kami ng kapatawaran sa lahat ng mga delayed obedience namin and mga complacencies namin and procrastination namin, Panginoon. We ask, I ask for your forgiveness and I repent of my sins, Panginoon. And I'm praying that all of us who are experiencing this would be empowered by the wisdom and knowledge that comes from your word and the Holy Spirit that empowers us to have a clear mind to obey them. Ay mabibigyan ka namin ng papuri sa aming buhay. Hindi sa kagalingan namin, hindi sa aming sariling lakas, but sa aming pagsuko sa iyo, Lord God, sa iyong pagkakahari sa aming buhay, sa iyong soberanya sa lahat ng aming mga gawain. At nagpapasalamat kami dahil higit ang iyong pag-ibig at grasya para sa aming lahat. We thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you continue to work your grace in our lives for your worship. Amen. Amen and amen. Again, maraming salamat po sa inyong panonood at pananalagi sa pagtapos ng message na ito. Tayo po muna ay kumanta ng papuri sa Panginoon bago tayo mag-goodbye sa isa't isa. It's your